welcome back to the Urology Care Podcast. As you may know, May is Bladder Cancer Awareness Month, and in 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic has been impacting patients and healthcare delivery around the globe. Today, we're going to be discussing bladder cancer as well as the COVID-19 pandemic, and I'm going to let our guest introduce herself and tell us a little bit about her work. So my name is Sumit Bandaria. I'm an assistant professor of neurology at the University of Southern California, and most of my work is focused on bladder cancer and other cancers of the urinary tract, and most of my research is focused on reducing survivorship burden amongst patients with bladder cancer and trying to uh, improve access to excellent bladder cancer care for all patients. Can you tell us a little bit about what bladder cancer is and what some of the symptoms are of it? Yeah, so bladder cancer is the fifth or sixth most common cancer in the U.S. And what it is is a cancer that affects um, the bladder, obviously. And the most common symptom that brings patients in and leads to its diagnosis is blood in the urine, which is either seen uh, with the naked eye or is picked up on a urine analysis typically done in a primary care office. Can you describe what the different types of treatments that are available for bladder cancer might be? So with bladder cancer, the treatments all depend on the stage and the grade of the tumor, which basically means um, how aggressive the cancer cell looks under the microscope and how deep it goes and what layers of the bladder it involves. So for 75% of patients in the U.S. who are diagnosed with bladder cancer, this is what we call non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, which means that it may even be an aggressive looking cell under the microscope, but it hasn't yet gone into the muscular layer of the bladder. And depending on how um, aggressive those cancer cells look for these patients with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, the treatment can range from simply um, an outpatient or overnight procedure where the, um, where the lesion is shaved off of the inner lining of the bladder, which is called the mucosa of the bladder, or it may involve needing weekly treatments of a immunotherapy or um, or a chemotherapy agent in the bladder. The thing to know with these types of cancers is that these non-muscle invasive bladder cancers is that recurrence, meaning that the cancer comes back within the bladder, is pretty common, and that there is, particularly for some of these patients, a high risk of progression, which means that it could begin to invade into deeper layers of the bladder. And for that reason, close surveillance by a urologist Um, is typically necessary. Then there's the other patients who present with a bladder tumor that has gone into uh, the muscle of the bladder or even farther um, and occasionally presents as metastatic cancer. Um, In those scenarios, um, more extensive surgery, which may involve removal of the bladder or chemotherapy with radiation or just chemotherapy or immunotherapy alone is needed. So it really all depends on the the grade of the cell, how aggressive it looks, and how deep it's gone. Right now, we are obviously in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic that is really changing the way healthcare is delivered. Can you just tell us some some high-level items about what patients should be aware of when it comes to bladder cancer treatment during this pandemic? So one thing patients need to know in terms of bladder cancer in the setting of of the COVID-19 pandemic is that um, it's still important to try to seek urologic care if you are experiencing that most common symptom of blood in the urine, which we call hematuria, because bladder cancer um, is an aggressive disease and we don't want to be missing a diagnosis. The reassuring thing is that, you know, there's no direct connection between COVID-19 and bladder cancer itself, and also that urologists across the country and across the world now have um, fairly robust telehealth capabilities wherein you can have a consultation with a urologist 
and discuss what's going on without having to come into the clinic if that is your concern. Will this outbreak delay people who do have bladder cancer in their care in any way? We do worry about delays to care uh, in the setting of COVID, and that's for a few reasons. One is that people we know are less likely to be going in for general health screenings right now in which um, blood cells in the urine, which we call microhematuria, which may be the first sign of bladder cancer, might be picked up. Um, additionally, patients understandably feel wary about uh, coming in to see a urologist or any other physician, even if they are seeing blood in the urine, for example, um, which is which is understandable. And again, I would just urge patients to investigate their local urologist telehealth capabilities if they are having some of those symptoms. In terms of um, patients who um, already have bladder cancer, we are trying very hard to uh, not um, have any delays in care. And I think most urologists are seeing their bladder cancer patients in some form or the other um, in terms of um, um, surveillance. There are some newer um, um, tests that can be done through the urine and can even be mailed to the home which give us another option to uh, be monitoring our bladder cancer patients closely without having them come necessarily into the clinic. Are there special precautions people should be taking who are currently undergoing treatment for bladder cancer during this pandemic? Well, Casey, one thing that we need to stress is that overall having a bladder cancer diagnosis does not um, put you at higher risk of catching COVID-19. However, um, our bladder cancer patients on average are in their um, 60s, 70s, and older, and so they do represent a higher risk age group if they catch COVID-19. And because of that, it is important in general just to take precautions. For example, if you are coming into um, an office setting either or, uh, or a hospital setting to get scans done or to get a cystoscopy or an intravesical treatment done or a surgery done, um, of course, precautions need to be taken. And while this is region-specific, uh, typically these should involve um, um, clinics being um, reworked so that social distancing is, is possible. Um, I would advise patients to wear masks when they are coming into a hospital or a clinical setting because we do know there is some increased risk with that. In terms of specific therapies that patients may be undergoing in the risk of COVID, first of all, for the patients undergoing intravesical therapies with BCG or um, chemotherapy agents, um, we have no data that suggests that those patients are at increased risk because of those therapies. In terms of patients who are getting uh, systemic chemotherapies or immunotherapies, certainly if you're getting chemotherapy and you're immunosuppressed and your blood counts are low, we do, uh, we do, which is what we call neutropenia. Um, in general, those patients are more susceptible to um, infections of, 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 of all types. Um, but we we have we don't have any clear data yet that those patients are having worse outcomes in terms of COVID than any other patients really. Um, now patients who are undergoing immunotherapy, which is a newer uh, type of, of uh, a newer class of drugs that has been found to be effective in bladder cancer, we we know that overall those patients do fine. Very rarely they have complications that require them to be on steroids. And those patients, again, just like the, the chemotherapy patients who have neutropenia, those patients are immunocompromised and, and do have a risk of catching any infection, um, which would include, include COVID. And lastly, the patients who are undergoing surgery, um, this is an, an area where we are learning more and more every day. Um, at my hospital, we are testing patients and making sure that they are COVID negative before we take them to surgery for all patients because um, data from Europe would suggest that patients who did have had COVID um, had worse outcomes after surgery. And, and so we are taking those precautions. And certainly, as I mentioned, being in a hospital does put you at some risk 
Um, most hospitals are, are taking, uh, a, a lot of precautions and have very specific protocols to keep COVID patients and non-COVID patients very separate. Um, but that is certainly something to discuss with your um, provider before you undergo surgery. The last thing I want to stress is that with bladder cancer, we have to weigh all of these risks of COVID with not wanting to miss our critical windows to uh, to treat bladder cancer because, again, it is an aggressive cancer. So while we are, um, you know, those of us who, who do this and take care of patients are um, very much um, focused on how do we uh, decrease the risk to our patients with this pandemic, we also don't want to see patients delaying care and missing our window of treatment and potentially our windows of cure. Dr. Bonvaria, do you have any other final thoughts for us before we wrap it up? Thank you, Casey. I do. I just want to, again, stress that uh, what we don't want to see happen is patients um, be understandably concerned about the pandemic, but us see um, a, a lapse in the continuity of care or even access to care um, for, for bladder cancer and also more broadly for our patients. So I would just urge patients, if they feel, um, if they either already have an existing bladder cancer diagnosis or they are concerned um, that they that they may have something that needs to get evaluated, don't just wait because we don't know how long this current situation is going to go on. And almost definitely this pandemic is not going to go away for many, many months. I would encourage patients to reach out to their um, local urologist or their primary care to get them into a urologist and explore the options for telehealth and have those conversations to find a way that you can get evaluated and diagnosed if need be or continue um, your bladder cancer care with minimal interruptions in a way that is, um, is safe from both the cancer perspective and also taking all precautions that we can um, during this pandemic. You've been listening to Dr. Sumit Banvaria. She is a urologist specializing in urologic oncology with the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Casey. This podcast has been brought to you by the Urology Care Foundation, the official foundation of the American Urological Association. For more information on today's topic and for all things urology health, visit urologyhealth.org. That's urologyhealth.org.